personal. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to get my thoughts on some of these fights that happened on the Bam Rodriguez undercard because there was two fights in particular that I think were definitely worth talking about. Now, you had Mirja Akhmadaliyev, you know, unified champion, 122 pounder. He's a guy that really, truthfully speaking, he's been one of boxing's most irrelevant champions because one, he's not a big name. Two, he's been very inactive. And three, when he's fought for the most part, he hasn't necessarily lit the world on fire. Um, so this is a chance for him to fulfill one of his mandatory obligations against, uh, you know, the former Bantamweight champion, Marlon Tapalis. And uh, it's went all wrong for uh, Merger Akhmadaliyev. He has, he lost to him. So now Marlon Tapalis gives him the first loss of his career and really uh, takes his O and, and stymies any momentum that he had, which by the way, he didn't have a lot of momentum, but you know, those, those belts really kept Merge on somewhat relevant in boxing because whenever they talked about Stephen Fulton needing to be undisputed, they'd mention Merger Akhmadaliyev. Whenever they, whenever they talked about big fights for Naya in a way, potentially at 122, they talked about Merger Akhmadaliyev, but now his name's not in the mix. So it is what it is. Congratulations to Marlon Tapalis. Philippines stand up. You got another world champion. It's like, it's crazy. The Philippines, when they lose a world champion, they gain one. You know, they lose Mark Moxayo, they gain Marlon Tapalis. So shout out to the, the great nation of the Philippines. They they definitely um, have a way of churning out champions and, and, and things like that. But to me, I want to st stay on Merge on because let this be a lesson to any fighters out there that get belts and that unify titles. And any managers out there that, that their fight, they, they guide their fighters to that position where they are unified champions. Don't be like Merge on. Don't, don't do what he did because Merge on had a chance. He had a legitimate chance to really do something in this weight class many times. He became champion in January of 2020, I believe it was. It was, it was Super Bowl weekend in Miami because I was at the card. I was at the fight where he became champion. And he never really... So yeah, Merge On became on this... He became unified champion that night against Danny Roman. And he sat on the titles. He, he, he really showed no intention of really wanting to be champion and be undisputed. And, and like Fulton, Stephen Fulton became champion in what? In early 2021? I know Stephen Fulton was very adamant about making that fight with Merge On. Merge On really didn't want to make that fight. Uh, 2021, non-existent. 2022, non-existent. So for two years, Merge On didn't do anything. But then all of a sudden when, when we hear about Nayoa Inoue coming up to 122 or, or thinking about coming up to 122, now Eddie Hearn wants to say, he wanted to say, oh, well, they'll make the, they'll make the um, Merge On versus uh, Inoue fight. But... And Eddie Hearn even said, that, oh, we spoke to Merjohn's manager, Vadim, who also manages Bivol, and we'll make the fight with Inouye. But they, they didn't never want to make the fight with Stephen Fulton. So it's like, he's a cautionary tale of how you don't move as a champion. He's a cautionary tale of like, when ducking goes wrong. And when you then, and then when a governing body has a tough mandatory that you just, you, you, it's going to be tough and you lose to. So now Merjohn's career, Merjohn's career, as far as I'm concerned, I hope, I hope he made some good money because now his career... Uh, I think is is you know I don't want to put a fighter down for losing, but it's not I'm not really putting him down for losing. I'm putting him down more so for like what led to the loss, what's t what's transpired because, um, you know Fulton in a, in a way could be bigger if Merjan would have fought uh, Steve Fulton because he would he would have lost to him, and then Fulton versus Inoue could have been for all the marbles. But you know I, I'm sure Marlon Tapalos will be a proud champion. Filipino fighters are not you know duckers. Uh, for the most part, so uh, I, I think he'd want to fight Fulton or in a way or something like that. So congratulations to him. He he's been grinding for a long time. You know, forty fight veteran, two division champion. He's a he's a legit fighter. So uh, shout out to him. But yeah, Merge on Akadaliev, happy trails. Um, we barely knew you. You know. So with that being said, and with that being established here on True School Sports, let's let's switch gears to Raymond Ford because Raymond Ford, uh, he took on Jesse Magdaleno, and this is a fight that I was very excited about because Magdaleno has that championship pedigree. Um, and Raymond Ford had some performances in the past against you know Edward Vasquez and um, Aaron Perez, where he didn't look great. It really should have at least a loss from one of those two fights on his resume. But God must love him because he didn't get a loss in those two scenarios. Now, 
with that being said and with that being established here on True School Sports, um, Raymond Ford, I, I got to give it to him, man. He's, he's, he's in a good run of form. I think he really answered the bell in a great way in this fight. This fight was a great step in the right direction for, for Raymond Ford. Uh, he beat Magdaleno easily. He dropped him in the fourth, dropped him in the 11th, showed uh, co a consistent you know, display of a box from the outside, mid-range, power punching. And it looks like Raymond Ford, um, to an extent, is, is developing a little bit. And, and it's good to see because I always say, like, a fighter, I don't believe in a fighter being as good as the last fight. I, I, I like to look at the fighter's body of work. And um, Raymond Ford's fought some tough opponents, some live bodies. So I give him credit for that. But he hasn't looked sensational against those live bodies. But, again... A fighter can develop, and, and, and as time goes on, it looks like Raymond Ford is starting to slowly but surely develop into a, a decent little fighter at uh, at 126. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Raymond Ford is going to do at 126 and to see uh, if he becomes champion. You know, and you can't you can't be out here shitting on Raymond Ford and saying he got gift decisions, and then when he beats a, a former champion, a proud champion like Magdaleno, you don't want to give him his due. So it is what it is there. As far as Magdaleno, um, from what I saw in the fight... Uh, I, I think we've already seen the best of him. I think we've seen better days from him. Uh, and the best days are probably behind him. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to tell nobody to retire or what to do. But, um, you know, just I, I don't really see him being a big factor in the featherweight division. You know, uh, if you can't beat the Raymond Fords of the world, how are you going to beat the Mauricio Bronco Laras and Odebeck Komatovs and, and these kind of fighters who are at or near the top? You know, I just I don't see it. So he was good. He was a great, really good fighter back in the day forward champion he has a lot to be proud of but i think it might be that time for him but uh it's not even about him it's about raymond ford it's about raymond ford finally uh starting to show a little bit of promise and fulfilling some of that promise and i look forward to seeing how he's going to develop so shout out to camden new jersey very young but yeah that's my take on the card on the on the undercard if you if you guys don't take if you guys don't take nothing from this video merge on Akhmadaliev is a ducker and um raymond ford is developing so that's it that, that, that's how i summarize it merge Akhmadaliev. um Sat on the belt for too long, and Raymond Ford is starting to develop a little bit. And let's let, let's see where Raymond Ford goes, because Raymond Ford has been under a lot of criticism, especially for me here on True School Sports, and um, he deserves the opportunity to, you know, develop and, and see what he's got going for. So let, let, let's let's give him that benefit of the doubt. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe, and like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time. Take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.